Hey, what's up, YouTube? <clears throat> Today, I just wanted to make a quick video to um, maybe dispel a little confusion about dual element water heaters. Mine was uh, acting up a little bit, and since I had the covers off, figured I'd show you guys what I'm talking about. So, I know some people who um, have a good tall water heater, 40 gallons, maybe 50, I don't remember. But it's only got one element at the very bottom. And that thing has such a horrible, horrible recovery time. I mean, you use up the hot water, you're looking at at least a half hour or more before you're going to have anything. Because that element has to heat all of this water. It has to rely on natural convection to, you know, have the, hurt, the heat circulate through the water it's very inefficient and it's really really sucks up your power bill and i suggested a dual element water heater and kind of the reaction i got was oh no that'll make the light bill jump up even more didn't really understand why they would say something like that until i talked to somebody else i knew who is under the same kind of assumption so, most people assume that because this thing has two elements, it's going to draw double the power. And that's just not true. Um, you can think about this logically for a second, and I'll show you why. So, this water heater in particular has um, 4,500 watt elements. Maybe 3,500. I can't remember. It's supposed to have 45. And somebody has put 35. Okay, so it's got 3,500 watt elements in it. And right now, the bottom element is on. As you can see, that's what it's drawing. 18 amps. Now, this water heater is constructed with 12 gauge wire. Which has an ampacity of 20 amps that's all that 12 gauge wire can safely carry is 20 amps so if both of those elements were to go on at the same time well you would double that you would be close to 40 amps and that wiring just cannot handle that it would melt and catch on fire so this is how the water heater actually works. Okay, you got your bottom element. This one runs the majority of the time. This guy down here. Because the cold water comes in, okay, it's got a tube that spits it out at the bottom. It doesn't let the water run in the top because then you would cool your hot water. You don't want to do that. So it shoots the cold water down here in the bottom. So like I said, most of the time, unless you're using an extremely large amount of hot water, the top element usually never even comes on. So I want you to look at this, this thermostat in here. It's different from the top. Okay. You see how, sorry, it's a little bit dark. Can't turn the camera on now that I'm already recording. But... We can get the camera to focus too. That would. All right. So you see how it's got one contact there, one contact there. Then it goes down to one side of the element, and the other side comes back up here to the top. Okay. Now this one here is totally different. This one's got a lot more wires coming in. So if you look, these are both sides of your hot. This is 120, this is 120. This is, um, you can kind of think of this as a, a relay that has two positions, normally open and normally closed. So in a normally closed position, you got one leg that's over here, and it passes down over here, and it goes through the relay portion over here to this side. And that's what goes down to the top wire of the bottom thermostat so it can be switched on and off 
depending on the temperature of the water. But now, if you're using up your hot water, okay, the hot water is going to stay up here at the top. The cold is going to push up from the bottom. So once the cold pushes up to this point, enough to affect this thermostat, okay, this relay is going to switch. It's going to quit making contact over here at the bottom element, and it's going to switch over here to this wire, which goes to the top element. And that's how it works. It doesn't power both at the same time. It kills power to the bottom element and switches it to the top. Because right now, heating the top of this water heater is more important than trying to heat the bottom. And that's why a dual element water heater is more efficient. Because I can run this thing completely gone of hot water it'd be a hundred percent cold and flip the breaker on and in about three minutes that water will be hot enough to be usable okay now if it was just the bottom element it would have to heat all of this water which takes a long long time but just being that top element it's only heating from here down okay that's not that much and that's how it works. So once this gets hot enough to trip the thermostat, then it sends power down there. And the bottom element just takes care of all the rest. All that down there. But while this is all heating, you've got plenty of hot water up here to use. So let's see if I can um let's see if I can demonstrate this for you real quick, okay? So now my water heater's hot, okay? You can see we're not drawing any amperage. I know it says 0.13. That's just because you know the, the meter doesn't read perfect zero. It's not a not a fluke. I'm not going to spend the money for a fluke. But anyways, so the bottom thermostat is satisfied now, but the power is still going there. Okay, so let's pretend that we want we've used up all of our hot water, and now we're below so let's let's make this top thermostat call for power okay you see what i'm doing turning it up you just heard it click all right we're drawing amperage you can hear it that's top element okay let's do uh check it with our voltmeter this is kind of hard to do because it's one-handed and i got a camera Okay, let's flip this up, put our test leads on the element, okay, look, 240 volts, let's check the bottom element, same thing, put the leads on, nothing, okay, now, we'll go ahead and we'll turn the temperature back down, okay, well, no, wait a minute, you know, we'll leave it just like that. Just in case somebody says, well, the bottom thermostat was satisfied too, remember? Okay, let's turn it on. Let's turn it up. See what I'm doing? You heard it click? It's calling. Let's check it. Has it got power? Nope, nothing. Okay, now, you heard that? You heard that thermostat click? It's calling for juice. Look, amp reading, still the same. It's only going to supply power to one element at a time. When this one reaches, it's what it's called for, and it's satisfied. Now let's make this satisfied. Okay, just heard it click. All right. Let's get the voltmeter. Okay. Okay. Take another volt reading. So we got voltage here. We got nothing. Okay. Look, we'll pull an amperage, a little bit less. Now the reason for that is, like I said, they're both 3,500 watt elements, but the top one is used a lot less than the bottom one. So 
Let's go back to voltage on our meter. Okay. Of course that had to happen right then. Come on now. Okay, there you go. 240 volts. So I hope that um I hope that clarifies some things for you guys. Maybe uh you didn't know that. Maybe you as well thought that a dual element heater would be more on your light bill because you figure well two elements double the power consumption no all the all the top element does is split the workload uh, well maybe probably thirds the workload so two-thirds of the water down here is heated by this element the top third is heated by this element gives you makes your recovery time a lot faster and in my opinion this water heater heats up a lot faster. This one will go from stone cold to fully hot with both elements satisfied, both thermostats satisfied in about 20 minutes. Um, just a single element of the same size, probably about 40 minutes, about double the time. So hope that clears up some things for you guys and answers some questions.